Hello everyone, we are group 7 from tutorial C. For this video presentation, we have chosen the case study on Osner's offshoring and reshoring. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Clarissa and I am from Indonesia. My group members will now introduce themselves. My name is Andra and I'm from Indonesia. I'm Heng Diazo from Myanmar. My name is Mac and I'm from Indonesia. We will begin this presentation by giving a brief background of the case study, followed by the two analytical tools we have chosen, which are the Porter's Five Forces and the SWOT Analysis. Afterwards, we will use these tools to support the three issues we have identified, and finally, we will draw a conclusion based on our analysis. In Mora, Sweden, there was a company named Osner, making bathroom armatures and mixers for households and businesses. In 2003, when they were faced with German and Swiss competitors challenging their market leadership in Sweden, they decided to follow the trend of offshoring and outsource its production to partners in China. However, business did not develop, and this relocation turned out to be a nightmare. Hence, in 2010, when the new CEO, Clay Seldably, came in, he decided to turn back the time and had a new vision of reshoring to bring back the business to its hometown of Mora. Although several challenges arose in the process, such as the shortage of skilled labor and finding suppliers for manufactured components in Europe, they finally reshored back to Mora in 2011. In 2014, they acquired a Danish competitor, Damixa. With this acquisition, they strengthened their market share in the Nordic region and broadened their product range with a third brand. One of the tools we used for this analysis was Porter's Five Forces. This is comprised of competitive rivalry, bargaining power of buyers, bargaining power of suppliers, threat of substitutes, and threat of new entrants. So let's start with competitive rivalry. For Osner's case, there are many key players in the kitchen appliances industry with very intense competition, coming from brands like Electrolux, Panasonic, Whirlpool, Philips, Samsung, LG, etc. Despite being the leading mixer company in the Nordic countries, Osner still decides to strengthen its position in the Nordic market by gathering three of the strongest Nordic brands under the same roof. This includes Denmark's leading company, Demixa. After the acquisition of Demixa in 2014, Osner becomes the market leader in Sweden, Denmark, and Iceland, while being number two in the UK and Finland. Even if Osner is the market leader in Sweden, they also have rivals who are selling alternative products. Groha which is headquartered in Denmark, is one of those rivals. Osner's marketing approach is not that effective than that of Groha, which is why Osner is a leading brand only in the Nordic countries, but not globally. If customers were to switch to another alternative brand available, Osner would be the one losing its customers from word of mouth or from the quality of their product. Next, threat of new entrants. The barrier of entry in Osner's business, which is the manufacturing of kitchen and bath shower furniture, are considered high. This is caused by the amount of resource required to invest to have the capacity of production, or in other words, to set up a factory and to have human resource operations for workforce and R&D and for the production of the products. Therefore, the threat of entrance is very low because the market and industry is already matured with intense competition. Profitability is just not lucrative for the new entrant. Brand loyalty also plays a big role in a distribution network, which causes difficulties for new entrants to compete. Next, threat of substitutes. The demand for bathroom armatures is expected to grow, as many consumers today are paying particular attention to the bathroom and investing in furnishings and equipment. According to a study by the German Sanitary Industry Association, around 30% of consumers in Germany wants to renovate their bathroom and make related purchases in the course of the next year, which is 2019. Furthermore, the threat of substitute products is very low as there are not many substitutes available. Even if there are, they're not that powerful. Therefore, this force does not threaten Osnor in the foreseeable future. Furthermore, we have bargaining powers of buyers. In Sweden, Osner has such a high market share that its sales cover all the segments. This is as according to F.M. Madsen, not dated. With its vision to be customer's first choice in the bathroom and kitchen, their products currently have a market-leading position in Sweden and Denmark, which makes a strong position in the Nordic region. This is because, for Osner, the customer always comes first. 
They constantly are focused on understanding customers and quickly developing the products that they want when they want them on their terms. In 2018, the business generated sales of more than 1.4 billion Swedish kronas from its companies in Denmark, Finland, Benelux, Germany, and Sweden. Furthermore, their offering to the market and the customer is based on eco-friendly and health-smart products, coupled with high quality and innovation, as well as attractive design, as one of the long-term market trends suggests that end customers or users are getting more influenced over mixed faucet choices, and they realize that design is becoming a more competitive requirement. Therefore, under Osner's strong established brands of Mura Armatura, FM Matson, and Demixa, it can be concluded that their buyers do not have the power to drive the prices down, and it is unlikely that their buyers would switch suppliers. Finally, we reach bargaining power of suppliers. Osner has, has an issue with supplying manufactured products to Nordic and Eastern European regions, as Chinese suppliers were both disinterested and unable to supply relatively small quantities to Sweden. This would, of course, eliminate Chinese suppliers as alternative suppliers and would therefore simply give more bargaining power to Osner's current suppliers. Now, we will move on to short analysis. Strengths. Osno emphasized innovation and introduced new product lines about every 18 months. The new CEO modernized the innovation process to stay in close touch with consumer preferences. Since 82% of their customers in Sweden are women, he brought in women into the R&D team so that they can better understand both the technologies and also the consumers. They have strong marketing through the strong well-established product brand of FN Medicine, Mura Amatura and Amitsa. The strength of this brand is also one of the group's most valuable assets. Furthermore, they are a consistent team of operations which is leading edge technology, high quality, attractive design and eco-friendliness is also a key to its sustainable success. Osno has also achieved demonstrably strong earnings and profitability gains with their strong market positioning and product portfolio. In 2018, they generated sales of more than 1.4 billion Swedish kroner from its company and they believe that they have the potential to continue achieving positive progress. Weaknesses When Osno reached back to Sweden, it was a challenge for them to find suppliers of raw materials in the Nordic and East European area. This is because Chinese suppliers were not interested and unable to deliver small volumes on the way to Sweden. Also, after the reshoring, Swedish Kroffman had to make the amateurs in modest volumes using high technology and local inputs. Although there were many young people looking for job opportunities there, they need to be trained as manufacturing jobs were not so popular in the current internet generation. Another weakness is that Juan Mora Amatura and Fen Medicine reintegrated. They already had distinct organizational cultures and brand identities, which still occasionally led to tensions. Opportunities First, Osno should conduct some research to require resources. If Osno has explored the world's market and has necessary resources, it should go international. This will not only increase the market for the organization, but ultimately will increase the revenue. Second, the kitchen and bath market is growing according to industry research. In 2018, the industry size has surpassed $147 billion. Third, the kitchen and bedroom industry does not only have much alternative products, but also the chances of new competitors entering the market is relatively low. As of now, Osno has the highest market share in this industry, which is why Osno is one of the most trusted brands in the Nordic countries and is able to stand firmly in the market. Threats Osno is faced with competition from neighboring countries such as Germany and Switzerland. German competitors such as Gruher and Swiss competitors like Lawfen, as well as new technological developments by these competitors may not result in Osno losing its customers to them, thereby decreasing its market share. Furthermore, constant technological development by competitors can also threaten Osno if it does not train its workforce accordingly, as inability to keep up with changes may result in Osno loss of business. Lastly, the rise in prices of raw materials is also another threat Osno is facing, as increase in cost may decrease the overall net profits. Now that we have analyzed Osner's Porter's Five Forces and SWOT, we will now identify and discuss the issues that Osner is facing. 
Oshnor issues. Based on SWOT and Potter 5 Forces analysis, we determine there's three issues for Oshnor. Issues 1. German and Swiss competitors challenging Oshnor market leadership in Sweden. This issues is based on the Potter 5 Forces analysis, which is competitive rivalry. The motive of Osnor when deciding to offshore to China is caused by the competition from German and Swiss company to get the market leader share. Those companies include Grohe, Hans Grohe and Axor from German competitors and Laufen and Gebrit from Swiss competitors. Osnor decided to offshore to gain new market share of the economic segment in China. Issue 2. Osnor failed offshoring to China and reshoring back to Sweden. The motivation of Osnor offshoring to China is to reduce manufacture costs, which include labor costs which is cheaper in China, and to maintain market position as the leader in the market. Of course, the third reason is to bring attention back to the core of the business. These are the challenges that cause Ofnor to fail offshoring. The first challenge is entering a new market of China, which can be related to the Potter 5 forces, threat of new entrant, and also SWOT analysis, which threat in facing established ban in China. The second reason is infrastructure of communication. The time difference and the method of communication influence how the information is available for offshore company in Sweden compared to in China. The third reason is different in culture. As a Sweden company, offshore need to readjust their work culture to fit the work culture as a Chinese company. Issue 3 finding supplier for manufacturer component in Nordic and East European area, and also finding workforce. This issue is based on the SWOT analysis of weakness of Oshnor. After Oshnor reshore back to Sweden, they already acquired the Mexa as a company in China. So they decide to continue to sell to the economic segment of the market. However, the issues arise when the high cost of shipping of the manufacturer component from China to Sweden on a frequent basis. Therefore, they need to find a new manufacturer of supplier in the Nordic and East European area. There is also a need of finding new employee and skill labor. Just because they move back to Sweden, they need new workforce and skilled labor to run this segment. There will be a challenge in finding distribution channel and to be efficient in the logistics to China to save costs in the operation. To quickly recap, we would like you to remember these key points. Osner's case study is a good example of how a business can fail when attempting to outsource its manufacturing services to a foreign country, of which they have no good understanding of its marketing niche. For instance, offshoring increased cost of production. Outsourcing of the company's production services resulted in reduced manufacturing costs and increase in inventory enhancement costs. Also, there are quality management and quality problems. Controlling and management of the product's quality was highly costly. Besides, ensuring the product quality was time-consuming, expensive, and cumbersome, and required resources investment, which was beyond reproach of the company. Moving forward, we would like to give a few recommendations for Osner. The company should focus on improving its manufacturing line of production to ensure that it aligns with the international business standards. This is because the fail to withstand market competition in China was because it was performing poorly in its production line. Additionally, they should also focus on improving the quality of its products. And that brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for your interest and attention.